it's Joe from Joe's Country Junction and I'm glad you came to visit me on a Sew with Joe day. Today I am I'm not quite done working with my spiderweb string block quilt that I've been telling you about earlier in the previous Sew with Joe episodes but I decided you've probably seen enough of that and I'm looking to expand my horizons and head out for another project. I, if you've been following along in my blog, which I'll put a link for that down in the description box below, I have been tackling all of the UFO projects that I can because I'm trying to get my UFOs under control. Um, I think many of us can relate to that because it's hard to want to start new projects when you have the guilt of all those old projects um, laying behind you. Uh, the, the book that I'm working from today is Bonnie Hunter's book, um, Scraps and Shirtdales 2. I'll put a link for that down below. And the quilt that I'm working on is uh, this quilt right here. And this is Holy Toledo. I cut this out years ago. Um, I was an in-home child care provider and I am actually going to be going back to that. Uh, I was off due to COVID and um, my health issues. So while I was doing child care before, I had time over nap time because I'm an in-home child care provider. So the kids are all sleeping downstairs, so I need to stay downstairs. And sometimes I would get my work caught up and I'd have like, oh, 20 minutes to 45 minutes in the afternoon that I could do what I needed to do or wanted to do because the kids were all sleeping. I worked really hard to try to get the kids to all nap at the same time just so that I would have a little bit of a break. And so during my break, I would quick try to eat and then I would work on something that was my own kind of project. So oftentimes in my kitchen island, I had a quilt that I was cutting out. And this happens to be one of the quilts that I was cutting out at the time. And so I maybe cut this quilt out about two years ago. I knew I always wanted to make the quilt. And so it was no big deal for me to uh, have the quilt cut out. And it's not a UFO that's been hanging over my head that I feel terrible that I haven't finished because I knew that I was just killing space and time during my childcare day to get the project cut out. And that was totally okay with me. But now I'm kind of wanting more space. I'm wanting to clean out UFOs. I'm wanting to not have any guilt at all about starting new projects. And so I've been tackling my UFOs as many and as I can. And um, here I'll grab just a, a, one of the UFOs I just finished up. Um, well, it's actually three UFOs that I, that I finished up because at the time I also cut out other projects. And so I had three baby quilts cut out in just knowing that sometime I'm going to need a baby girl quilt. And so I finished up three of those just recently. And you can check out the blog and you can find more about those. Um, it's a free pattern on the blog and you can check that out there. Um, and so I'm going to just be sewing today. And it's going to be kind of boring sewing for some people because I have this entire box. See this box? It's all full of half square triangle units that need to be sewn. And so I looked at the pattern and I looked at what I had cut out and in my notes in the book, um, the quilt is originally supposed to be 76 by 92. And I'm sure when I cut it out, I probably wanted it to be 92 by 92 because that's totally something I would do. And so I noticed here it says I need 700 of those half square triangle units. So I'm going to be sewing those half square tri triangle units for quite some time. But that's okay. Um, a lot of people don't, they don't enjoy um, chain piecing. Me, I adore chain piecing. I just love to sit down at the machine. I love to just let my brain rot. Um, sometimes I just um, turn on an audio book. Sometimes I watch TV maybe like you're doing right now while you're sewing. And sometimes I just do nothing and just let my brain wander and think and kind of uh, get myself to a little bit of, uh, I don't know, more comfortable place, I guess I'd say. So chain piecing to me is just, oh, I, I really love it. Just piecing and piecing the pieces through the machine. So I'm hoping this machine isn't too loud. Um, this is my 
Faf. It's uh, known as a Hobby 1200, or um, some people call it a Grand Quilter. Um, I had the machine for, hmm, I don't know, quite a while because we lived at the farmhouse when we bought it. It was originally together and it was, it was a mid-arm machine that is hooked up, that was hooked up to a next generation quilting frame. And so I could put the machine on the quilting frame and then I could long arm quilts. And it worked really good for about, I don't know, three years. And then it just quit working. It just, yeah, it, it, I had terrible thread breakage. Um, I was crying all the time. And about that time, Kelly and I were working on our book and we needed to have all these quilts done. And when we were, when we were doing that, um, I would have a deadline and I would be upstairs and the thread would break and the thread would break and the thread would break. And I mean, I'd go like six inches and then thread breakage again. And I did everything I could. I, they asked me if I had burrs on my machine. Um, I, boy, I just went through everything I could and I never did find the problem. Um, I thought I'd fix it and then it would, they would work for a quilt and then I thought I'd fix it and then work for a quilt and then it wouldn't work. And it was just so frustrating. And, um, my husband came up at the time and he would, you know, he would look at it and he'd say, well, I don't really know what's wrong with it. And, and I said, well, just watch me, just watch me. Maybe you can see something if you just watch me. Um, so then maybe you could see what's wrong with it. And we never did find out what was wrong with it. And um, I just, he got sick of me being upset about it. And he finally just said, enough is enough. He goes, just go buy yourself a long arm. And I did. And I have an APQS Millennium and that is in, that's behind me right now. Um, I'm in my sewing room and um, you're, you can see about half of my sewing room right now. Uh, it's a 14 by 20 room and when we bought our house it was a foreclosure house and this room was built um, in the addition so we have a two-story addition and this is part this is the upper part of the addition and I am just thrilled to have it I spent many years sitting at the dining room table when the kids were all little and that's where I sewed then. And I, I enjoyed that, but um, I, I, I'm i happy I have my own space up here now. I feel like it really is uh, my space. Like um, people have a she cave or a man cave or places like that. And I really look at this as, as my space and I don't have to consider anybody else's wants, needs, or desires when I'm, as I, designed and as I hang things on the wall I don't have to think if it's too feminine or not too feminine or um, sometimes I uh, when my husband was still living I hated to think about um, a very very super floral floral uh, bedroom when my husband was sleeping in there too but that's just me so now I would say of all of the places in the house this room probably reflects me the most. I'm trying to sneak in a little bit of uh, quilting time now because um, I, do you do this too? I keep my, I take a couple medications um, and I take them every night. I am diabetic, so I take metformin, and um, I have uh, higher cholesterol, so I take a cholesterol medication. And so I put them all in a pill popper or pill box organizer, and I hate, just hate, filling that pill box organizer. It just is one of the my least favorite things to do, and I really don't know why, because it takes about five minutes to do, and it's not a big deal to do it, but I just hate doing it. So... Um, being I hate it so much, I went to town and I bought four pill poppers. So I have enough for four weeks. And so I just fill them every four weeks rather than fill them every week. 
And it's not a big deal. I don't know why I just hate doing it so bad, but that's what I did. And so four weeks ago, I had filled my, my pill bottle, my pill organizers, and I went last night to take my medicine. And I realized that I only, I don't have enough to get through um, the next two days. And I am filming this on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So I have enough for tonight, but I don't have enough for tomorrow night. And obviously it's Thanksgiving and the pharmacy is going to be closed. So um, I need I needed to go to town to get the medication. So of course I call in to get both of them filled, made plans to go to town, even though I went to town yesterday and I'm really trying not to go to town because I'm filming this during COVID and I'm trying to stay away from town as much as I can. So, and for us town is to get medication is a half an hour away because we live in rural Northeast Iowa. And so it's a half an hour to get to the pharmacy so I didn't, so this morning I got up and I called to get the prescriptions filled. And of course, my problem is the prescriptions have to be reapproved by my doctor. Oh, so I know. And then the pharmacy message machine says that it takes a day for the, it takes a day or so for the pharmacy to contact the doctor and the doctor to get back to the pharmacist and the pharmacist to fill the medication before you can get the medication. So I had to call my doctor this morning because I wanted to hurry the whole process through because as I said, tomorrow's Thanksgiving and I need the medicine for tomorrow and I can only pick it up today. I won't be able to pick it up tomorrow. So I had to call the doctor and the doctor said that they would, the nurse or whatever said that she would try to get that through. <laughs> so then I called Calissa and I said, hey, I know it's your day off today and um, it's Carver's day off from school too. Do you have any need to go to Decorah? Because I'm going to Decorah anyway because the closest town where we go and do shopping at is Decorah. And um, she goes, well, yeah, I've got some things I need to do in Decorah. And I said, well, what do you need to do? And she started listing off going to a couple like small downtown shops because she was picking up Christmas gifts for people. And I'm just like, oh, I don't want to take the boys in those shops because Carver is four and Gannon is oh, 21 months. Not quite two yet. He'll be two in February. And so taking those two boys into a shop with what we call pretties is not very pretty. <laughs> they just, they're just typical boys and they want to see everything and they want to touch everything. I think that's very typical for their age and it's not like they're naughty. They just, that's how old they are and that's what they do. So after some discussion, I said to Calissa, well, you know, if you want to go to those shops and we want to ride together, then maybe I could just sit in the car while you run in. Well, that didn't sound very fun to her because she actually wanted to shop and just not not just run in and get something and come back out. She kind of wanted to take a little longer and then she was worried about me sitting in the car with the boys and then that got into a whole discussion and then what we ended up deciding is is that I would stay home with the boys and she would just pick up my medicine and I would go relook at the cupboard to make sure I have everything for Thanksgiving and whatever else I didn't have, she would just pick up. That sounded so much better <laughs> um, because really all I needed to do was go to Walmart. But Calissa and I try to um, conserve gas and time when we can. And so we do each other's errands all the time. Well, then Calissa called me back and she said, um, I want to have lunch with two of my old uh, co-workers. And I said, oh, that sounds fine. And um, so then now everything got moved back. And so she's coming at about noon to um, bring the boys here. And so the boys will probably just more, more or less nap at my house. And then we'll have a little extra time besides nap time too which I'm happy about. But in the meantime, as, I sit in, as I'm sitting here sewing, I'm thinking, oh, what needs to be on my list? What needs to be on the list? 
And then Calissa, of course, says to me, Mom, well, this morning, why don't you just shoot a video? And if you get a video shot, I can edit it. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do a video about? And she said, well, why don't you do a Sew with Joe? Because those have been so popular. And she is right. The Sew with Joe segments have been super popular. And I'm very excited and happy to be doing them. Um, and I really do plan on continuing to do them. I know some of you are probably going to be worried or concerned about how things will change once I'm back to doing childcare again. And um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that it will change a lot. Um, we'll see. And you guys have been so good and you have like Oh, go on with the flow with me for so long, you longtime readers. Um, I've been blogging now for, oh, 11 years, I believe. And you, whatever happens in my life, you guys have just kind of stuck with me and and um, put up with the craziness of, of my life that I actually love. But... do like to do when I'm sewing a lot of um, half square triangle units here. I'll move that so you can see that better. Um, yeah, I'm going to have a huge pile of down on the floor when we're done with this. But um, I like to, when I cut these out, I layered a um, colored piece and a white piece together with right sides together. And then I took an easy angle ruler and then I cut them out. And being this quilt is going to be scrappy, I did a lot at once and I um, like I cut a stack of like eight of them or something and then they then I made the cut and then I turned the ruler like this and then I made the cut here and then I turned the ruler like this and made the cut here and then I turned the ruler like this and made the cut here and that's how I cut with the half square triangle ruler and so these are already matched together I know a lot of people, when you do triangles, you have to take the white piece from over here and the colored piece from over here, and then you have to put the two pieces together and then you feed them through the machine. By doing and putting the two pieces together at cutting time, you can see how much time I'm saving because I'm just picking up the, the one unit that's already matched and paired together and running it through the machine like that I don't have to pick up one from this side and pick up one from this side and then put them together and then feed them through the machine and also because that dog ear that little top portion right up here that they call the dog ear that is already gone and cut off the piece when I cut these so that's the pieces feed through the machine so much easier and I really I really appreciate that and I would have to say that learning how to use an easy angle ruler, which I'll put a link for it in the description box below, really made my life change as far as quilting goes because I absolutely love it and I love being able to get these pieces through the machine a little bit quicker. So another thing I do is once I have the stack like this, I lay them out like this and um, so I have them and they're ready for the machine. Whoops, this one got off a little bit. I do have to reposition that one. So as I'm sewing, I can just put this one through. And if you see my hand over here, there's a piece right here. I can just grab this one and I slide this one into place. And you can see my hand over here. And as this one's sewing, I slide this one into place. And now I'm grabbing one from over here and sliding this one over. And you can see that that really saves a lot of time by not having to stop in between each piece. I'm using a 
Lori Holt seems so easy guide as I put these through the machine and I am going to put a video clip in to show you how that works. I'm going to wait until uh, Calissa stops by and I'll have her help me film that because I'll be honest, I tried to film it um, oh, I think four different times, just a little short two minute segment that I was going to pop right in here. And um, as you can see right here, uh, there's I'm trying to get a camera to come up. So I have a bar that comes up like this and I have a clip and I have to put the camera on it and I shot it once and the angle was wrong. Um, I shot it again. My hands were all in the wrong spot so you couldn't see the video. I shot it again and then I realized that my machine was super dusty and I was embarrassed about that. So I didn't want to film that one and put that in there. And besides, it still just wasn't quite right. So then I had myself sitting here. I had this uh, clip between my legs. I was trying to pinch my upper thighs together, but yet move my foot so that I could get it on the feet of the, of the foot of the machine. And so I could still make the machine go. Well, then the camera was just wobbling like this as I was trying so hard to pinch my upper thighs together and to get my foot to run the foot feed. Uh, you would have really laughed if you saw what I was doing. And it's just so, so hard to film um, when to get the right angle for stuff. I had somebody, um, I recently did a... I recently did a poinsettia and ribbons video to show how to do a machine quilting design. And I worked and worked and worked to try to get the machine, the camera in the right spot. And ah, I, it's, it was good, but it wasn't perfect. And I'll be honest, I just don't think that there's a way to get the angle of the camera perfect. So in the comments, somebody left me a note that said, you need to reshoot the whole portion of you being at the machine in the video. And it's like, number one, that quilt is already gone. The quilt is already bound and the quilt was already donated. So I really can't do that as that's the quilt I was doing that design on. So I really can't reshoot that. And the person doesn't realize that I already shot it like three times trying to get the camera angle right. And this was the best I could do. Uh, I just don't have a good way yet to manage the camera and to do that. So far, um, I'm doing the best I can and it's okay. And I think if you follow along, I think you can still get the idea of the quilting motifs that I'm showing and like today you'll still get the idea of um, what I'm doing but I think if I can have Calissa be behind my shoulder and film from behind my shoulder I'll probably have to sew like this for it to happen but I think that that's what I'll be able to do because she can stand here and put the camera like right here and angle down the right way so that um, you'll get an idea of how to do that so she we do we are going to put a clip in right here right now of Calissa filming the video. Uh, Calissa's here now and the boys are here too. So if you hear a bunch of noise in the background, it's the boys. Um, I don't know quite what they're doing. They're looking out my window, but okay. I told you I have a Seam So Easy guide by Lori Holt and that's this piece right here that's attached to my machine. And I love using it for sewing half square triangles. Boys, don't no fart that. sounds. Yeah. Okay, so this is the line right here that I'm going to use. And I use an easy angle ruler to keep the corner off of there. And so it's easy for him to feed through the machine. So I just do this and I keep it right along that line right there. And that's how I do it as I sew. And so you can just see how I'm feeding that through there like that. And I'm just super excited. I love this method for making half square triangles. So many people have their own idea of how they like half square triangles done and this is my favorite method. And so once again, this is Lori Holtz. Um, seems so easy guide and I use my easy angle ruler to cut the triangles and I just feed them through like this and it's quick and easy that way. Okay, mom, can I give him a sneak peek? Of what? 
a sneak peek of your awesome sewing no, room. No, you can't. What if I did a really no! quick one? <laughs> I'm not quite done yet, so. It's looking really good, though. Yeah, it's getting close. Can't wait to film a full tour of it. It looks right. awesome. So. I love it, too. So, see you later, guys. Okay, so now I'm back. And I'm sewing more pieces. Uh, how many did I say I had to do of these? I think I said a thousand or seven hundred. Yeah, I'll be here for a little while. And now I'm just getting them set out again. Okay. <laughs> bit of a goal to have a video once a week. I don't know if that will be able to continue to happen, but that's kind of what my goal is. Because, um, surprisingly, doing videos has gotten to be quite popular. And I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I'm a person who um, hates learning new things, but I kind of like a challenge. And it's kind of like childbirth. Sometimes there's a lot of pain before the good comes. Uh, I think some of you might know and some of you maybe don't know, but uh, Calissa started doing podcasts. And I think she's feeling much of the same way I am, that at first it's they're hard to do because you don't know all the technology and all the steps and everything you need to do to do it. But then once you do a few, um, it gets a little better and a little better and a little better and a little better. And so... I'm hoping that I am getting to the better and better part and I'll get better at those camera angles and I'll get better at some of those kind of things. But if you want to check out Calissa's podcast, um, it's from Calissa is my uh, last daughter. She's the youngest of the family. We had five kids in eight years and Calissa's at the tail end of the bunch. And she loves trying new things. She loves trying um, all sorts of stuff. After the initial hard part, then she's just in love with, with that and so excited that she learned something new. And so she's the one that edits my videos for me, which I so appreciate. She keeps telling me that um, she's teaching me how, but I don't think, I love Calissa dearly, but she's not as patient with me as I need someone to be because technology, I'm just not the best at it. People think that because I write a blog that I can just know what to do and um, that I'm smart about technology or that I understand stuff and I just don't. I really truly don't. And so I can't tell you how many times Kayla steps in and saves me or Calissa steps in and saves me. I remember the first time I wrote a blog post, Kayla sat down with me and I said, okay, you need to write me a cheat sheet. So Kayla sat down and she, you know, wrote me a, a, a sheet that it says like, Go to joescountryjunction.com. Sign in. This is your username. This is your password. Click post. Click add new post. This is where you write your post. You're going to need to add a picture. This is how you add a picture. <laughs> I can't believe I went from way back then and I kind of laugh at the hard part that I had to go through to um, get to the part I'm at for blogging now. It's just, it's just funny how, how we evolve. I did tell you that today is the day before Thanksgiving. Our family isn't getting together like we normally did. Um, I think we probably could have 
but everybody's just still a little bit nervous with COVID and um, nobody wants to get each other sick. It's just a whole thing. I just don't know how to deal with it all. Um, and then the other problem is, is that when we are together now, um, there's 10 adults and seven kids. And so even though, my, even though I have a decent sized house, we're just still, we all end up, we all end up around the kitchen island. It's just a given. If you have a house and you have people over, I don't know what it is, but everybody just always ends up around the kitchen island. And I'm okay with that. I totally am. And it's just that then we end up all pretty close together. And I'm not going to have people wearing masks in my house. I just, that feels a little bit awkward to me. So far, our family has been very lucky. Um, we've had a few scares that we thought maybe somebody should be tested or had to get tested, but um, the results have always come back negative, which I'm very thankful for. Okay, I'm setting them out again, getting ready to go through the next step. Did you hear Rosie just growling? Or she's repositioning herself as she sleeps. I think um, she has a dog bed just over that way. I keep a dog bed pretty much um, everywhere where I sit down and spend quite a bit of time at because Rosie, if I'm upstairs in the sewing room, she's upstairs in the sewing room. If I'm downstairs writing blog posts by the computer, she's downstairs by the computer. She's not writing blog posts, but she's sitting down by the computer. If I'm cross-stitching, she's on the couch. So she's pretty much my like companion dog, total companion dog. And so just to keep her a little more content, I always have a dog bed wherever I'm at. So she has four dog beds. I know that that seems a little excessive, but there's one here in the sewing room. There's one down in her kennel. There's one by my computer. And I keep one on the couch. Um, that's kind of an effort to keep the amount of dog hair down because she does shed. And if I have a dog bed there, she typically lays on the dog bed or on my lap. And that just cuts down some of the dog hair on the actual couch. from Country Threads, I joined her Dirty Dozen group that is working on sewing up some of their UFOs. And so I've done pretty good so far. I haven't really um, abided by the rules because the rules are, and it's not a rule. I shouldn't even say the word rule. Um, the suggestion or the idea behind it was is that you made a list of 12 quilts that you want or 12 projects because you could do a knitting project or something like that if you wanted as well. But 12 projects that you wanted to finish in the next year that you've started but were sitting in like UFO status. So I came upstairs and made my list and 
couldn't really pick which things I wanted to do or not wanted to do. So I ended up making two and a half lists because you number them from one to 12. And then each month, Mary goes through and Mary picks a number. And with the number that she picks, then she, um, so at the beginning of the month, she picks the number. And so if she picks number two, you go to your list and whatever project is number two, that's the project that you finish. Well, for me, I thought, well, I'm just going to make this list. And I'm going to make two sets of 12, and then I'm going to number the next eight projects into another list. And when Mary would pick a number, like let's say she picked two, I could do any one of the three projects, or maybe I could try to get both projects done. And that went good for the first month or two. <laughs> but then um, I wrote a blog post about it, and I said I went rogue. And that's pretty much the truth, because I was looking at that list and as I was doing that, I've been trying to clean and remodel in my sewing room or refix in my sewing room, reorganize. And I realized that I really wanted to get all of the projects done that needed to go through the long arm. Through the long arm. And so I started just doing any project that was here that was a flimsy quilt top and I didn't follow the list anymore. And right now, the only one I have left to do is right here and it's the double wedding ring quilt. And so that's the last one I have to do of my flimsies. And I've kind of bounced around on the list a little bit. Rather than use the dirty dozen philosophy all the way, I kind of move towards uh, um, what project can I get done quickly? And so I started looking at the list and my what project can I get done quickly kind of changed my list a little bit. So that's how I started doing these baby quilts is because I looked at the list and I thought, what project can I do quickly? But I also think that happened to be the number that got picked too. But I had one quilt for one number and one quilt for another number. I think one was eight and one was nine. Or maybe one was seven and one was eight. So anyway, I just decided I was going to do, I was going to make them. And when I was making them, um, I had enough pieces to actually do three quilts and I thought that there was just enough for two quilts. So I sewed all three of them up at once and um, I actually sewed all three quilt tops in a day and I machine quilted them all in one day and I bound them all in one day. Not all three things in one day. I sewed the tops one day, a different day, I machine quilted them. In a different day I bound them and so it's great to have those done and if I need a baby quilt top I already have it done I don't have to worry about so I have no idea what number this uh, my holy Toledo quilt I have no idea what number that is on my UFO list, but I do know it's on my UFO list and I know that I was just looking for something kind of mindless to do. I bet you all had to chuckle when you saw my last video. I had said that I wanted to sit down at the machine and I just wanted to sew and um, I had three interruptions while I was sewing. Um, so today it's going pretty good though. Uh, nobody's interrupting me. Okay, set another group out. Oops, there's a little piece there. Project isn't for any specific reason. I'm not like making it for a gift. Or something like that. I'm just making it. And I'm sure um, someone's going to ask the question, so I'll just tell it in advance. Um, this is made out of all 100% cotton recycled shirts. 
and someone is going to ask because they always always do how do you um, cut your shirts apart and so I I have a blog post about that and I will put that down in the bottom of the in the description of the video there's a little box down there and it tells about the things that I talked about during the video and I'll just put this right in that box I'll put the information about how to cut up shirts ago um well i'm a bonnie hunter fan um if you read the blog you already know that um and so a few years ago i went through and i made every single quilt in her string fling book and so somebody asked me you know are you going to do that again and to be perfectly honest i've kind of thought about doing it with this book and this is um the scraps and shirt tails 2 book and I'm just going to sit here as long as we're here. I'm going to count and see how many quilts I have done already from this book. Um, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's 13 quilts in the book. And I have um, Smith Morton Mountain Morning done. That's gifted to Carl. I have Fair and Square done. Um, that I've kept that quilt. Um, I'm currently working on Holy Toledo. I have Crisscross Applesauce done. That was the first quilt that I made from this book. I have Hawk's Nest done. I did that one as part of the Dirty Dozen Challenge already. Um, I have Stars Over Shalot. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that, but I have that one done. Um, I have Bricks in the Barnyard done. That was one of the flimsy quilt tops I had. Um, and I did that one as part of the Dirty Dozen. Um, I, I have Rectangle Wrangle done. And I have Carolina Christmas done. So I have Goose in the Puddle. I don't have that one started. Um, Tumalo Trail. I don't have that one started. Old Kentucky Album. I don't have that one started. Oregon or Bust. I'm making that one out of shirts. And um, that's on my UFO Dirty Dozen list. So I have this one, and then I have one, two, three, four. Four other quilts that I'd have to make to have all of them done. That's not too bad. It's enough that I would definitely think about maybe just making them all, but not right now. Today I need to just make this one and concentrate. Do you ever do that? Um, I do. I am going to make the other one I talked about making um, that I already have cut that I'm working on is this is Oregon or bust and Mary from Country Threads did the quilt and I printed off a couple of her pictures that from her blog and she did them um, in blue and orange and I definitely want to make this in blue and orange and that's how I'm planning on I'm planning on following Mary's color palette when I make that and I'm kind of excited about doing that but not yet I need to do this quilt first So here I am just laying out a big bunch of half square triangle pairs together that are paired together already. Yep. And then run this bunch through. <laughs>
a little bit of progress in my bucket before it was completely full and you can see these are are going down but I've got a lot yet to do which as I said is totally okay so after this I'm gonna probably <laughs> go down and get things together and start some of the cooking that I need to do for Thanksgiving. Uh, I'll make pie, I know for sure. Okay, something happened here that I think, because I don't have a bottom for this one. There it is. That'll work. <laughs> pies for sure. I was thinking about maybe making some rollout cookies, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I don't know if I'm feeling that ambitious. having uh, turkey. Carl works at a um, for a large area hog producer um, and every it's really cool every holiday they give their employees some type of pork for the holiday and so even uh, Labor Day, they got a couple packs of bacon and a pack of brats or something like that. And they do that for all of the um, holidays. And then Thanksgiving, he got a ham. And so we are having ham instead of turkey. My life is just a series of interruptions. Um, I had a phone call and then... I had another phone call and I'm back at it right now. And so I am just basically coming back on here to tell you all that I appreciate you sewing along with me. I had a great time. Um, I I really enjoy doing these. It's fun chitter chattering and, and um, I love reading the comments that you all leave. I really appreciate that you do that because I know that's extra time out of your day for you to do that. And, but I really do appreciate it because um, it just brightens my day. So if you want to leave a comment, please do tell me what you're sewing on. Tell me what you're up to. And um, has anybody made this Holy Toledo quilt that I'm working on? Um, I'd love to see a picture of it and um, for a little inspiration to keep me going with my sewing. So have a good day. Bye.